So we described the normal modes of these coupled pendulums, but we also want to be able to describe any motion of the coupled pendulums. Anything they might want to do, we want to be able to describe. So now, let's think about what I'll call an abnormal motion, which basically just means any motion other than a normal mode. So let's see, the one we actually want to describe, we'll start with something simple. We'll start with an initial condition where mass A sits here at its resting position. Mass B rests at x equals d, but we'll give it an extra amplitude like this. And when we release it from rest, we're going to see the complex motion that it makes. But you have to do your equations first before you get to do your demo. So let's put this away, and we'll get it back out in a minute. So first, let's describe this mathematically, um, kind of like we did before. Here is A, and B, let's see, and that's on the origin of the x-axis. And B would normally hang here at D, but we're saying that B has been displaced over to here. So it's actually sitting at uh, sort of an amplitude a naught, but then the position would be d plus a naught. And the spring is still connected. So this is our initial condition, and we want to describe what's the motion going to do. Well, we could try to guess directly x a and x b. But the reason we did normal modes is because that's difficult. That is difficult and coupled. The reason we did the normal modes is because they are not coupled, right? We could also guess normal mode solutions because they are, well, I don't want to say they're easy, but they are not coupled. You can think of those two normal mode motions as independent of each other. They're the two fundamental motions of the, of the objects when they are coupled. So we're going to describe abnormal motion, we're going to describe as a superposition of normal modes. Okay. So to do that, we do have to make a guess. We have to guess those normal mode solutions. So if we think back, we derived everything. The two normal mode solutions made a standard oscillator equation of motion just in terms of the normal coordinate. Okay, so I didn't define this before. I'll define it now. The sum mode that goes at omega sum, which is the square root of g over l, is equal to the xa position plus the xb position minus d. Remember when we got a, an equation of motion for it, um, we had this times a constant squared equals the second derivative of this. This was the coordinate that went with that normal mode. So we can guess that that normal mode is going to go, is going to oscillate as a sinusoid because it obeys the simple harmonic uh, motion, equation of motion. So it's going to have some amplitude, a sum. Uh, I want to go with cosines, cosine, and then it would be at the square root of g over l, all right? because uh, that was um, the, that's omega sum, that was the natural frequency of that mode, times time, plus it might have its own phi, its own phase. So that's just your standard guess, standard simple harmonic motion guess. The other normal mode was the difference mode, q diff. Remember, it was equal to, um, if you looked at the equation of motion that we got, it was xa minus xb. And since the d is usually in parentheses, it ends up being plus d. Okay, that was the minus mode. And it can also, we can guess. It followed the standard equation of motion, so we can guess a sinusoidal motion, a diff, give it an arbitrary amplitude, cosine, and its frequency was g over l plus 2k over m t plus. It could have an arbitrary phase. So there is our guess. We're guessing this is what happens. So just like a regular uncoupled single oscillator problem, next thing to do 
is to figure out these constants from the initial conditions.